This is my simplified version of that chart. I'm starting with homocysteine. We need a place to start. And it seems like that's sort of the center of where the imbalances can happen. Now, if you have a molecule of homocysteine, it has two choices. It can go through the methyl cycle and generate a methyl group, which is a detox, one of our detox pathways. Or it can go down the transsulfuration sequence. And down here, it helps to generate glutathione, another one of our detox pathways. And it makes sulfite, which can be converted into sulfate, yet another detox pathway. And in the process, it generates ammonia. Now, ammonia is bad, and ammonia needs to be detoxified. It's BH4's responsibility to detoxify ammonia. BH4 is just another enzyme. Now, BH4 not only detoxifies ammonia, but it also makes serotonin and dopamine. So, if you are generating a whole lot of ammonia, you're not going to have as much BH4 left over to make these two hormones, or neurotransmitters. And these are both important. Low serotonin is associated with depression, and low dopamine is associated with ADD. You can also get issues from having too high dopamine. Many factors affect your dopamine levels. You can have levels that are too high, and you can have levels that are too low. BH4 and vitamin D both are involved in making dopamine, and methyl groups, along with the enzyme COMPT, are responsible for breaking dopamine down. Now, if you have low BH4, but you also have low methyl groups, or you have slow activity of COMPT, then you might not notice the effects of low dopamine. If you have normal BH4, but low methyl groups, or normal action of COMPT, then you might end up with really high dopamine, and that can be just as much of an issue as too low of dopamine.